I'm Jason Hoffman. My goal is to help you have the confidence to just press go live. The debate as old as time itself, okay, not really, Android or iOS, which one should you use for your Mevo Multicam streaming setup? Today we're going to dive into the similarities, the differences, and then you can decide which one you think is a better fit for you. You have lots of choices when it comes to deciding which operating system you're going to use. Let's see how the Mevo Multicam is built on each of those. And then let's test them out. Let's connect all of these Mevo Start cameras. Let's connect a couple of NDI options. Let's connect a couple of Mevo Go options and let's see which of these processors are going to be one better than the other. Now what we'll be testing with today includes an iPad Pro M1 processor the new iPad Air M1 processor. There's a price difference between the two, but is the computing power different between the two? And then the Android option we'll have is the Galaxy Tab S8 with the Snapdragon, let's see, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 processor in it. And how will it stack up between these two M1 processors? I'm trying to get a fairly even look at these two units. We've got the iPad up top. We've got the Samsung Galaxy S8 down below. And you can see that the Mevo Multicam app is laid out pretty much identically. Okay, a couple of things we can reveal in this part of the app. If I hit the drop down box here on both units, I'm going to get a free space on the iPad, but I'm going to get a CPU load and free space on the Android because the Android reports what its CPU load is. The iPad doesn't give that kind of information. Close that back up. We have the mute button that is the same for our monitor. We've got the live recording out, all three. We have the output. I've chosen to let the uh, microphone on the iPad, the microphone on the Galaxy Tab S also be on, uh, or, or at least recognized by the app. They're muted at the moment. And then we have our ability to go into our tab. We have the blue plus button on each app. And that's going to allow us to add our assets, our resources. Now, the other tabs that we can go through before we get to that blue plus button, if I tap on the uh, icon here for adding a, an overlay, then you can see I have several in the iPad that have already populated. I haven't added anything on the Galaxy tab yet. We can look into our settings at the three dot ellipsis at the bottom, and you can see transition type, auto director, crop settings, camera input, and video source latency, all the same for these. We'll go back over to our main screen and we'll hit the plus button for both of these. Now, it's going to give us the choice to add a camera, graphics, picture in picture, audio, and then the subscription part at the bottom. We have the ability to do Mevo Go and NDI inputs beta. I am testing that beta on the iPad version. I'm not testing it on the Android version, so we will see a difference there. Go ahead and tap on the camera tab on each of these and we can see we have several cameras ready for us to set up. So far, as far as initial look at all of this, until we get cameras and, and other assets uh, connected and online, we don't see any difference between the two. I don't see any difference in the way they behave. If I were to make the call just based on what I see so far, it would absolutely be a toss up. Let's go ahead and connect them on the iPad. Yes, I have Wi-Fi and then hit continue and go through and I have all of my options available in front of me. Now, I should have the exact same picture. There should be no lag, no delay from one camera to the next. As I move through the frame, you're going to see all of them go at the same time. Let me see if I can get that last one up here as well. Yep. So you see as, I, as something moves through the frame, it's going to show the same picture all the way through. I've got my latency set on standard latency, so it's not going to be ultra fast compared to what I'm doing. But it is going to process these images fast enough for each of them to be in sync. Audio as well. I have audio turned on on one, two, three three of the cameras. Let's, uh, let's just do two of them and see how it syncs the audio. Uh, we'll do a quick recording to my device so it catches everything, not to their SD cards, because some of them don't have SD cards. And we'll start recording. Nothing special. Um, I'm just wanting to catch and make sure audio sounds 
reasonable there. It's not going to be great audio because it's the audio audio coming out of the Mevo start itself, and this room is not really good for that. But you can tell that it's going to be synchronized. The processing of this particular iPad is going to work uh, well enough to keep the audio in sync all the way across these seven devices that we have on. We'll stop that recording. We'll pick up in the process of connecting all these same cameras to the Galaxy Tab S8. See, I have most of them connected already. Camera 1 is telling me it can't connect. Uh, not because it's too many, it's just giving me a failed to connect message. Uh, I've restarted it and, uh, and connected it to the same network again, but it still gives me that same uh, message. So my best option at this point is just to run this with the six instead of the seven cameras on the Galaxy Tab. We'll see how it responds to bringing out the iPad Air with its M1 processor as well. So we'll continue here. And you can see we have the six cameras all loaded into our field of view. Once again, uh, we should have the same, uh, the same picture all the way across. Uh, I shouldn't have any one lagging behind the others because this processor is gonna handle all that we throw at it in this part of the test. We'll see that we have, uh, one, we'll turn on two. Let's see, that's 27NTH and 26G34. We have those two cameras with audio on, so we'll run a quick recording test there. Looks like I'm a little bit hot. Maybe on that one, so we'll bring it down kind of even with the others. And we'll go ahead and record. I just want to record I just want to record uh, to the device. I don't want to record, it, record to any of my SD cards again. So we'll allow that. And so now we have the audio that is going with our video running through the Mevo cameras. Uh, if I look at my shot here, I can tell that I'm live on that one, live on one of the cameras that is actually has audio on, live on another of the cameras that has audio on. And so the red light, red tally light, which we didn't show on the uh, iPad version, but it, it works the same no matter what's connected to it. Uh, we can see that I'm switching my cameras back and forth between those two, and the syn synchronization of them should be perfectly fine. Stop that recording. We'll get the other iPad loaded in here. Get Mevo Multicam up and running. We'll go full screen there. And now we have the ability to connect all of the same seven cameras into our iPad Air with the M1 chip. And there's that camera one giving trouble again. Ah, there it goes. So we'll continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so kind of the same is it in sync test. And we can see that each of these, uh, each of these preview windows is showing the same. Uh, there's no lag one to the other. Every, everything's also, by the way, zoomed all the way out. I made sure that everything would be having the same, uh, same chance not having to process a crop anywhere on one camera versus the others. And so we do have all of that. We'll run that same uh, audio test. We'll kill uh, camera one because it was the glitchy one. Uh, we've got those same two. We'll go ahead and record, not to SD card, start recording, close. And then looking over here, I can see which uh, cameras are are live based on my, my tally light. And so there's a camera with sound going into it and it's live. There's another camera with sound into it going live, going back and forth between those two. And you should hear no difference in sound at all because Mevo Multicam does a fantastic job of synchronizing sound, your audio, whenever it's uh, coming into several different cameras. We'll stop that recording. And let's look at adding some different assets. So let's go ahead and, and, uh, and look at maybe some picture in picture. So if I choose to have a picture in picture now, I'm gonna to need to do a little cropping on this because they're all trained basically at the same thing. I guess I could turn a couple of them around or put them so they face a different direction. So we could have that one have that view and this one have that view and do a little picture in picture based on what we see now. So if I want my first camera to be this one and then I want that to be, let's see, sources, camera two, free placement. Yep, I can put it anywhere I want to. 
on the screen works great. I don't necessarily want that heavy of a stroke around my, uh, yeah, let's, let's just don't do any kind of outline there. We'll hit done so that when I go to this picture in picture, it's going to give me an output of the view there facing the other way in the room and the view there. So picture in picture works fine. Another asset. Let's choose a Mevo Go. So we'll add a Mevo Go screencast from the Galaxy tab. That'll be another asset that we have available to us. There's a there's an eighth now screen that I can throw up onto the uh, onto the monitor. If I go back here, I can turn my picture in picture off. And then let's bring in an NDI source as well. Galaxy tab is controlling that NDI source. We are nine sources deep as we're running Mevo Go, NDI, and seven Mevo Start cameras through the iPad Air M1 tablet. Okay, so I was unable to get footage of everybody doing everything. Each tablet was run through the same set of tests with NDI, with Mevo Go, and with Mevo Starts, all connected to it to the max of what I can put on, uh, on my network, with the max of what the pieces of equipment that I have, and they all handled it without difficulty. I was able to go live with each of them, I was able to record with each of them, and I didn't have any uh, any issues with uh, one of the apps shutting down. I didn't have any of the issues with the cameras dropping off. I didn't have any issues that would make me think that one of these devices would be better than the other. So what it comes down to is, are you an Android person or are you an iOS person? Do you already have some of one ecosystem or the other? And if you do, go ahead and stay the course in that direction because they're putting out really good products. The processors are, are going to handle everything that you need. The battery life is going to be fantastic for both of them. You're going to be able to, no matter which way you go, choose a quality modern device and the controlling of, the, of all of your assets through Mevo Multicam is going to go great for you.